Roguelike games have become one of the most popular genre in the past 10 or so years in gaming. Really, they've become so common now that every single genre you can think of probably has a roguelike game in there somewhere. Bullet hell, action adventure, turn-based deck builders, or top-down games that are filled with lots of action and button mashing, or even just auto shooters. There are so many incredible roguelites out there and so many ways to play them. Most of them stick to single player, while some you can play with a friend. The genre really is so diverse and splits into so many other genres, and there's a few impactful games from the early 2010s that helped shine light onto the genre. Expertly crafted games like Binding of Isaac or FTL, which both released over 10 years ago. Now, this isn't a video talking about about the history of the roguelite genre so i don't want to delve too deep into it this is more so a video talking about the greatness of one game a game that i had the audacity to put in b tier in a tier list video which by the way that video is not that good in terms of rankings a rush project that should have had more time spent on it but anyways a game that is challenging unique and very very addicting to play and that's enter the gungeon enter the gungeon has a fun history it's developed by the team dodge roll and started development in 2014 when four employees from mythic entertainment left the company and started working on Gungeon. Mythic Entertainment was most well known for creating the MMO game Dark Age Camelot in 2001, but the company was shut down by EA in 2014, which most likely led to the creation of Dodge Roll. Gungeon's a game you can clearly see has a lot of love behind it and inspiration, really. Each run is procedurally generated, but during development, the devs created and playtested each room and then used procedural generation to connect them. Playing the game, you can see it's inspired by a lot of other games with guns making references to Mega Man and Metroid, and even referencing the NES Zapper used to play Duck Hunt. The guns aren't the only thing inspired from other games. Hell, the whole game has inspiration everywhere. Dave Crooks, one of the developers for Gungeon, even stated that Binding of Isaac was one of the game's biggest influences, but they also gained influence from Nuclear Throne, Dark Souls, Spelunky, and Metal Gear Solid. Now, if we fast forward to December of 2014, we can see the first reveal trailer of Gungeon on Devolver Digital's YouTube channel. And over the years, Devolver has published a lot of incredible games. Cult of the Lamb, Inscription, which I'm not really a big fan of, but you know, and Loop Hero are all some highly rated roguelite games that are published with Devolver, and Enter the Gungeon is another highly rated roguelite, of course, but all the games I mentioned before, they were released after Gungeon, and I'll say that Devolver still released some very popular games like Serious Sam, Hotline Miami, and Ollie Ollie, but Gungeon was the first major roguelite game published by Devolver. It was fully released on April 5th of 2016 on PS4 and PC, and then it was released one year later on the Xbox and got ported to the Switch later in 2017. And today, you can play the game almost anywhere. The game has sold over 3 million copies as of 2020 there's not really any other data talking about how many copies are sold but I, i'm sure it's at like 5 million by now now 3 million may not sound like a lot but for a small indie team that's no laughing matter now let's talk about updates less than a year after the initial release on january 26 gungeon dropped its first free update it was called the supply drop update and it added new pass to kill for new characters 200 weapons new shrines companions bosses over 100 new rooms and even a challenge mode even after an update that big they weren't done on july July 19th of 2018, about 18 months after the first update, they released a second free update called Advanced Gungeons and Dragons Update, which added 30 new items and guns, new rooms, a new floor with a new boss, new NPCs, and over 300 synergies. You would think that would be enough, right? Well, it kind of was. There was a third major update planned, but it got canceled in November of 2018 so they could focus on a new game. And at that point, they've been working on Gungeon for five years. And with each new gun added to the game, they had to test them against other effects in the game. And all that testing was wearing the developers out. But even with that said, a third and final update did happen. And it was the Farewell to Arms update. It happened on April 5th of 2019, and it still added new guns, items, playable characters, and a secret floor with a new boss. Along with that, it added a lot of quality of life changes. But with that, Enter the Gungeon stopped receiving major updates. Dodge Roll did end up making a new game called Exit the Gungeon, which released March 17th of 2020. And they also made Enter the Gungeon House of the Gun Dead in collaboration with Griffin Aerotech in March of 2020 as well. And House of the Gun Dead is actually just an arcade game, literally. And for time purposes, we won't be talking about those games. We're already like three to four minutes into this video. Maybe I don't know how long we are, but we're, we're, we're kind of deep into this video. So let's just jump right into the greatness that is Enter the Gungeon. Inside of Enter the Gungeon, we have four characters that we can play with to start, all with a different start and weapon and item. We have the Marine, the Pilot, the Convict, and the Hunter. There is a fifth character that's only available in co-op, and that's the cultist. We won't really worry about him too much. I personally have never played co-op in this game because it is local multiplayer only. I don't got no friends. 
what it looked like. But each one of these characters has a story, and we learn that story when we kill the past in each run, and killing the past is no simple task, and it's something that will take you multiple runs to do. That's one of the many great things about Enter the Gungeon is how much the game truly offers. To even gain access to the past, you must find a shopkeeper on the fifth and final chamber, and then she'll ask you to fetch four items to make a bullet so you can even gain access to the past. Now, you can take as long as you want to collect all these parts, and it'll probably take you a bit as the game is nowhere near easy. Even reaching the final chamber once is a task you should be proud of if you have done it. Our run in Gungeon consists of going through all these five chambers, with each chamber housing stronger enemies and getting bigger, meaning you have more to explore, which in the end will give you more loot. But a sneaky thing that took me a while to realize, and I think it's genius, is if you can avoid taking damage while clearing out rooms, you may be rewarded with more casings, which is the game's main currency. Now, the same knowledge goes for killing bosses. Without taking damage, the game will reward you with more hegemony credit and even a master round which will increase your total HP. Hegemony credits are used outside of a run and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, a total run could take you about 30 to 45 minutes if you don't do any secret chambers and just go for a kill on dragon casually. Yeah, like any great game, Enter the Gungeon is filled to the brim with secrets that will challenge you as a player. Every single main chamber, minus the fifth one I'm pretty sure, has their own secret chamber that you can access by doing certain tasks or by having a certain amount of money. I won't spoil all of them just in case you randomly click this video and want to learn about Gungeon, but in the first chamber, if you push a water barrel into a fireplace, that'll allow you to hit a switch to gain access to a secret room, which will house only one little passageway that you can open with two keys. Every single secret chamber is very elaborate to gain access to with needing good resource management and having the right items to give up. And on top of that, the secret chambers themselves are very challenging. Personally, I've been able to clear out all the secrets besides the sixth chamber, which is optional once the fifth chamber is cleared out and all four main characters have their pass killed, and then the secret rat chamber. They are just so goddamn hard. That's one of the great things I love about Enter the Gungeon. Even without a lot of difficulty enhancers present, you can still choose to make the game as hard as you want. Let's be honest, the game doesn't have a lot of difficulty enhancers, but if you have the right resources and all the money in the world, you can go to all these secret chambers and probably get your butt kicked. It's fantastic. And let me tell you, that damn rat chamber takes a long time to gain access to. But once you do finally make it in for the first time and then probably die, you just want to do it again. That's just talking about the main chambers and kind of the small gameplay as a whole. I'm not even talking about how to unlock the secret characters in this game, the robot and the bullet. The way you unlock these two characters is so elaborate and not too hard, to be honest. More so, it's time consuming in a good way. When I first started playing Enter the Gungeon, I didn't even bother with trying to unlock them for my first 30 to 40 hours until I had all the past killed. But even when I started trying to unlock them, I just had to wait for good RNG for the bullet and me to not mess up while carrying that damn TV. And then once they unlocked, it was so fun having the new challenge of killing the past of both of them. I will say the robot is so much harder because you don't actually get any health back. You have to rely on shields. But when I did kill that past, mm, it felt freaking good. The core gameplay in a single run, killing all the enemies, dodging like crazy, buying all the blanks, having so much money, trading weapons in, getting all the junk to find out it's useless in the end, finding all these secrets. It's all so much fun and one of the best experiences I've had in a roguelike game personally. But there's one more thing that I haven't even discussed yet that also enhances this game so much, and it's the NPCs in the game. When you're first playing through the game, you find a handful of NPCs locked in the gungeon. Saving them will throw them into the breach, which is just the hub area, and then they'll start appearing in your runs as well to sell you items, ask you to help them, or just have a fun mini game or challenge. A small number of these NPCs also will sell you new items in the hub world that you can buy with hegemony credits, which will lead you to being able to find the bought items in your runs. Every time I buy from them now, I'm thinking, will this be the last item I need? And for a couple of them, I have bought everything, but it makes you realize how many options and variety there is in this game. All the NPCs serve a purpose, and it's always fun encountering them inside of a run. My personal favorite one is the Winchester. He's an NPC who you can find in your runs, and you can pay him to play his minigame, where you have four shots to take down four targets. The more you hit, the better the prize. I've only aced the Winchester's game twice so far, so I haven't got the achievement for acing it three times, but... I'll get it soon. I promise you that. I'm going to get them all pretty soon. I got like 14 more, I think. That's not bad. Most games, the NPCs, you just kind of ignore and go on with your day. But in Gungeon, you look forward to seeing them inside your run to an extent. And they actively enhance your run. Sure, some of them can be tedious if you're a completionist like Frifo's Challenge. But really, I love the NPC design and the direction the developers went with how they can impact the game. Now, of all these great NPCs in the game, there are a few that really change up the game and can enhance the game with some difficulty and add some flavor to the run. 
I'll be honest, I'm not the most knowledgeable on this subject as I've only done blessed runs a few times, but really they change up the game a lot and it's a lot of fun. I may have only done blessed runs so far, but I do think it helps make Gungeon even more unique and help keep the replayability so high. Like I said before, the game itself is already really hard and you can choose to make it harder with secret chambers or go into the sixth chamber. I love that. But if you go up north in the hub area, you're looking at multiple NPCs and all of these NPCs change the game up. Granted, only one of them actually enhanced the game's difficulty. The others just give you a silly fun run. You can play turbo mode, which just speeds the game up and makes everything go a little bit faster, which can be a challenge at first, but it's just a fresh fun mode. You can have a blessing for six hegemony credits and have a blessed run, which has you constantly changing guns. Enemies stay the same, but the run stays super fresh as you get a new weapon so often. The only true difficulty enhancer besides giving yourself a curse in the beginning of a run is talking to this red dude named Daisuke. And this turns on challenge mode, which also costs six credits. Challenge mode can wildly increase the game as each room gets one to three modifiers, and the game has a lot of different modifiers that can happen, and even some bosses have unique modifiers, so Daisuke really makes the game a lot harder. But like I said, Gungeon does not have a lot of difficulty enhancers, and usually for me that helps make a roguelike game great. But I feel Gungeon has done it so well that they don't need all these challenge modifiers to make the game super challenging. The game is still kind of easy though once you figure everything out it's just so much fun i still find myself having trouble in casual runs but what really helps the most with the challenge of gungeon is how easy it is to make your own run harder by getting curses in the run you can get a curse by buying certain items stealing items praying at certain shrines or just carrying certain items and these curses increase the runs difficulty a bit because enemies are harder to kill and you take more damage and the curse can stack all the way up to 10 where half the enemies are jammed and deal double damage the way gungeon implements difficulty enhancement with curses or even challenge mode is incredible and a usual difficulty enhancer mode like Hades with the heat is not needed in a game like Gungeon. It's fun to see all the different ways that these games increase difficulty to keep their most dedicated players playing and mastered in the game but I still feel like Gungeon is one of the most addicting games I've played in the roguelike genre even without a lot of difficulty enhancers. But there's one other way to me that will keep replayability high, and it's far more important than difficulty, and it's variety. Gungeon has the best variety in almost every category for any roguelite I've ever played. Every single run truly feels unique with how many guns, passive items, usable items, and even pets are available. Every single run I play, I swear I'm picking up new weapons and finding new ones I love. Sure, not all of them are good, but where would be the fun if everything was great? On top of that, the game has so many unique synergies to enhance a lot of weapons or items that even playing for over 100 hours you haven't experienced everything sorry there's not much more to say about item variety really the way you unlock weapons and items the amount available and all the different npcs that change the game and help you unlock new weapons and then of course the great variety of enemies and bosses enter the gungeon has some of if not the best item variety weapon variety enemy variety bosses there's so many different bosses it's insanity what else is there to say really sure i've missed covering some things like shortcuts to make runs faster or talking super in death about stealing items or the shopkeeper but i feel i covered enough to really show my argument for why gungeon is so great and a master of the bullet hell genre there's a lot of bullet hell roguelites out there that play super well one of my favorites is returnal on playstation 5 and soon to be on pc but returnal has nothing compared to the amount of replayability and variety as gungeon it's not super fair to compare these two games of course as they're totally different but they're both great but really the bullet hell genre has evolved a lot and has a lot of fantastic games and a lot of them are roguelites we have the auto shooters like Protato and Vampire Survivors, which are still good fun. And then maybe some could even consider Cuphead a bullet hell game. But obviously that's not a roguelite. That's just a challenging single player game. But I do firmly believe that Enter the Gungeon has mastered the bullet hell genre and has made the most enjoyable bullet hell game out there and probably inspires a lot of other games to make great bullet hell games. And I appreciate you watching this video. And if you like this super in-depth talk about Enter the Gungeon, let me know. I can make more in-depth videos like this on any other roguelike games or any games that I enjoy. But I appreciate you watching and a huge shout out to the people that support me on Patreon still. I haven't made a video in a few weeks now because I haven't really had any inspiration to make any videos. Nothing really has spoken to me, I guess you could say. And I don't want to shoot out a video just to, you know, make a video. But I appreciate you watching if you got this far. And I hope to see you next time. Also, like and subscribe. See you next time.